Hello, everyone. Uh, let's uh, continue our class with the what we have learned. Now we are able to uh, complete our lab, lab 04. I would like to uh, create a folder to hold all the contents for lab 04. In my uh, document, that is 350D, I create a lab, create a folder, lab 04. And I would like to download all those stuff from uh, our course campaign website. Inside of it is 350D. This is what I downloaded. I use a pool to update, to pull down any updates. Oops, uh, we will use a git pool. Okay, now we go to uh, lab 04. There are some data, just a bird and a dragon. So I copy this bird and a dragon. Certainly you can uh, search through internet and download any uh, images by yourself. I would like to uh, use these two as a demonstration. Paste them here inside uh, lab 04. I want to uh, copy the location And inside this uh, terminator, uh, CD change to that folder. Where else? You see a dragon, a bird is there. This dragon is a complex image, and that bird is a clip art. Here you see the background is a transparent. Okay, now uh, we can, with this stuff, and go to this uh, lab. Here, subtask one, just encrypt a data file using different uh, ciphers and modes. Here, these three, let's just use these three with uh, open SSL. I want to uh, create a data file. You can use any editor, for example, uh, sub L. My data file, I create a data dot plan. Means the uh, plan data. Now inside this uh, plan data, I add a simple message. This is a secret military plan, save it. Okay, now we have that uh, data file. Actually, we can see its length, areas, dash areas, uh, data dot plan. You see its length is uh, 31 bytes. You see its length is uh, 31 bytes. Certainly you can also use a hex dump to see what what it uh, looks like when it's saved on the disk. Hex dump dash C data dot plan. So this is uh, what it looks like here. This is a secret military plan. And totally we have a uh, have 31 bytes, you can count the number. Each row here is a 16. Here, this one, you see it's just one less, which means 15, 15 plus 16, we get a 31. So totally we have 31 bytes inside this uh, data file. This is a T, it's ask code is 54. You can check the ask code table. Now, how do we encrypt? We demonstrated uh, last week, right? We use a uh, open SSL with the ink command. Ink command, uh, it does not mean encryption. It means just means a cipher. Dash E means encryption. And uh, we want to specify the cipher with AES. 
the key length is one to eight. The mode is CBC. Then we need to supply a key, but uh, we need to uh, check that uh, mode of operation. In CBC, do we need a initialization vector? So you can uh, check that the mode of operation. CBC, we need uh, initialization vector using. That IV means initialization vector. So you can check that CBC in this proc cipher mode. Here, we need a initialization vector to apply the encryption. And also the decryption needs the same initialization vector. Here, the initialization vector. Now, what's the length of this that initialization vector? And what's the length of that key? They all should have the same length at the print text, oh, sorry, at the key length. It has the same length as the data length, not the key length, because uh, we have three different uh, key lengths. They all should have this, the same length as the, the data block length is 128 bits, which means it's 16 bytes. 16 bytes, if we represent it with a hex number, it would be 32 hex number. So we use a hex number, let's make it a simple. Write 32 hex number, how do we write it? We can write like this, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9. Now we have 10 uh, bytes, then Zero zero one one two two three three four four five five. Here we have uh, sixteen bytes now. If you don't supply sixteen bytes, open SSL will add zero for you to make it uh, the length as the data block length. Then we need a key. Pay attention, this key is not is not a paraphrase. That's why we use an uppercase K means the key. The key length, again, we need the same length. You can use this uh, number. Uh, just as demonstration, in your real world, you use some uh, random key, random uh, initialization vector. Right? Here we just, uh, as a demonstration, to let you see the process clearly, we just use these uh, numbers so you can see them clearly, see their length clearly. With this key, we have initial vector. By default, open SSL, it will add a sort for you. So we know sort. And for the padding, currently uh, we don't specify it. By default, it will add a padding for you by default. Now we, we want to print out the true uh, key. We use dash P to print out the true key. Then the input is the data dot plan. The output we want to save it as data dot the first mode CBC. We use CBC to represent this AES 128-bit CBC mode. Now you see uh, this key is exactly what we typed. This uh, initialization vector is also exactly what we typed. We supplied. Then the second mode, ECB mode. For ECB mode, there's no initial initialization vector. Here, ECB mode, this ECB mode, we only need to supply a key, right? ECB mode, we only need to supply a key. So you can bring up this one, change this one to uh, change the CBC to ECB, ECB mode. We don't have an initialization vector, so delete this initialization vector. We don't need a key, so we use this key. And no sort, print out uh, the true key. Input is the same, the data dot plan. The output now, we change the name, the extension to ECB. So this is ECB mode. So you can, the key is there, is the same. Now the last remote is that uh, we want to 
practice is this uh, OFB mode, output feedback mode. The output feedback mode, do we need a uh, initialization work? Yes, we do. Here you check this uh, OFB mode. OFB output feedback mode. We need a key, we need an initialization vector to generate this key stream and apply a bit of XOR between this plain text and that key stream we will get uh, the subtext. Now you will find something interesting. For example, a last block, the plain text, if it is just partial, do we need to pad this uh, plain text? No, because it uh, does not go into that block cipher. So any length is okay because we apply only apply bit x or between this plain text and that uh, uh, sort of key generated by this block cipher. Even though maybe it's longer than our plain text, but we can throw away those uh, extra part. So you see this uh, OFB mode. We don't need a padding. And uh, this uh, counter mode, we also don't need a padding. So anything you see like this, if we don't need to supply this plain text to the input of the block cipher, we don't need padding. Here, this is counter mode, we don't need padding. Now we can go up. How about uh, this one? Do we need a padding? You check the plain text. Here, yeah, the print text is used a uh, bit XOR to the last, uh, to the previous several text. So we don't need a padding for this uh, CLB mode, right? It was a print text, if we, even though it's less uh, box partial because we don't need to supply into this block cipher. So this uh, CLB, we don't need a padding. How about this, uh, this one, CBC mode? You check this uh, plain text is supplied to this block cipher. Certainly, it should have the same have the same length as the data block. So this one need, we need padding because we supply the plain text into the block cipher to get the subtext. How about this uh, ECB mode? Absolutely, right? We supply the plain text to the block cipher, so you don't need padding. This is how do you uh, decide which one need padding, which one? Uh, do not. You check whether the plain text is supplied to the block cipher. If it's supplied, supplied to the block cipher, then we need a padding. Otherwise, we don't need a padding. Now we check the OFB mode. So we change this uh, ECB to OFB. OFB. Again, we need an initialization vector, right? Uh, we, we need an initialization vector, just copy this one. Paste here. So we have initialization vector, we have a key, and no sort, dash p print out the, the key, input this data, the output this time we saved uh, as data.ofb. Press enter. So you see the key and the initial vector. Now on the second, you need to compare the decrypted message with the original message. Actually, before that, I would like to show you their lens. It is dash uh, ls dash ls. The first arrow means list, the second S, which means uh, show me the file size. Okay, here, now we check the output. This is ECB and CBC mode. Did you see the subtract? It's 32 bytes. And this OFB mode is 31 bytes. It's the same as this uh, plain text. So this is also uh, evidence. OFB mode does not need uh, padding. But this CPC mode and ECB mode, you see it's 32 bytes. It's one byte more than this 31. Because we know the data block length is uh, 16 bytes. So the last block of the plain text is only 15 bytes. So it need to be padded with one byte. 
And you see clearly here in these two modes, one bed is padded. That's why we get 32 bytes. It's padded, then, uh, then encrypt. So in order to get that padding, we need to decrypt first, then to find that padding. So we also need to decrypt and compare them. So we need decrypt, so we just bring up those uh, commands and decrypt them. So we bring up the first uh, encryption, we did this CPC mode, go through this uh, command line, change this E to D, means decrypt. We read the same cipher, pay attention, we must supply the same initialization vector and the same key and a no sort, print out the key. Now this input is the ciphertext, so the input it would be a C, B, C, because we want to decrypt now. Here this dash D decrypt. And the output, we would add one more suffix here, data.cpc.dec, dec means decryption. So this uh, looks good, right? So we uh, decrypt this one, and you see the key and initialization vector is printed out. Let's uh, decrypt all of them, then we compare them one by one. So we print up uh, the next command, ECB mode, press home, go to the beginning of this command line, then use your arrow key, change this E to D, means decryption, with the same cipher, same key, key lines, same uh, mode, and the same key, print no sort, print out the two key input, this uh, ECB ciphertext, ECB ciphertext. The output is a decrypted uh, ECB. So you see the keys printed out it. Printed out, okay, now uh, with the last one, ONV mode. We decrypt the OFB. Here, this OFB, press home, go to the command line. Go to its beginning, change this E to D, means decrypt with the same cipher, same key length, same uh, mode, same initialization vector, same key, no sort, print out the key and uh, initialization vector. Now the input is the ciphertax, is this uh, OFB. And the output is a decrypted text. Okay, the key and the initialization vector is uh, printed uh, out. Now we can compare them. Before that, we use ls-ls to see those files. Here, now you check this uh, decrypted file. You see it come back to 31 bytes. And this, uh, ECB mode also come back to 31 bytes. That padding is removed automatically. And this uh, LB mode, you, you want to see it 31 bytes. Now we want to compare whether their contents are the same. We use a diff command. To make the we widely, uh, you can use we bin diff. We compare this uh, data.plan with those uh, decrypted text I just uh, compare one, you can compare other two by yourself. Uh, we'll compare with that data.olb.dec. And you see there is no difference. If there is a difference, it will be highlighted. So that's it. Or you just use a diff command, data.plan, but this is not a this cannot show you a vividly. Dot DC, it just shows the result if there are any difference. Otherwise, it shows nothing. Here, it shows nothing, which means there's no difference. So this uh, task one on task two. The image you, uh, you need to uh, apply encryption, decryption, then compare all in the data part of the two images such as this dragon, such as this uh, bird. 
uh, will not demonstrate because you know how to convert any image from any format to this BMP. Then you separate the header and the data. You in apply those encryption on any on only this data file. Then you combine concatenate that encrypted data with this header to get an encrypted image. Then you can open with the image viewer to see whether it's uh, encrypted or not. And in that bird, you should see still be able to see that bird if you use uh, ECB mode. But in ECB mode, you will not be able to see it, just like uh, this penguin showed here. Our bird is, it looks like this simple penguin. You will still be able to see that bird. But with the ECB mode, you will not be able to see it. You just see something like this as you as you saw in our previous lab. So this is the image part, but that dragon, you will not be able to see its pattern because uh, for most of every pixel, most of those pixels are different. So you will not be able to, to see a, a dragon in those uh, encrypted uh, files. So this is uh, this task, so you can do it by yourself because we wanted to know all these steps. Now the padding, how do we uh, get those uh, paddings? Here you need to create uh, three files, 12 bytes, 10 bytes, and 16 bytes of any data respectively. Uh, and we will show you just with the example I demonstrated. So because all this stuff, you can do it by yourself with the one I demonstrated to you. And you need to determine which of this stuff they don't have padding and uh, which of them they have padding. As we discussed, OAB, there's no padding, CLB, no padding, this ECB and the CBC, they have patterns. All right, now let's uh, try to find the, the patterns here. How do you find the patterns? I use one example, this uh, CBC, right? The CBC we have, it's padded with one byte. What that byte? We want to find it. Okay, in what to find it? We know uh, the encryption is like this. It's a padded first, then encryption, which means in the decryption, in what to keep, to keep that padding, I need to tell open SSL, don't remove my padding. How could we do that? We do it like this in the decryption here. That CPC mode. And that uh, ECB mode. These two modes. I just choose one mode because the other mode is similar. So let's choose uh, this uh, ECB mode. I only need to uh, decrypt. In the decryption, I need to tell OpenSSL do not remove my patterns. So I bring up ECB decryption here. Now this time, I need to tell this uh, open SSL, do not remove my padding and supply no pad in the decryption. It will not remove that uh, padding. So actually this is a trick. We just tell OpenSSL, actually we lied to OpenSSL. We lied to say, uh, we didn't supply a padding in the encryption. We just supply no padding here, then it will not remove that padding, even though actually that padding is added by OpenSSL itself. Okay, now we need to change the name because we want to find the padding, right? So we dig, also add a, Keep pad, uh, just uh, use pad, which means the the pad is uh, kept. And we also know that is padded with only a uh, one byte. Okay, now you uh, see the key is print out. I want to check this uh, decrypt file, which which it keeps the one byte. We can use that we've been diff to check its uh, contents. We've been diff with this uh, 
data. Now you see this is a plain text, but it also keep that uh, pa patterns. Data dot uh, ecb dot uh, dc. This is that decrypted one. Actually, this decrypted one is exactly as that plain text, right? So you use that plain is okay. Use this uh, dc is okay. So now I want to compare it with this ecb dot dc dot pad. This one has the pattern. Did you see it's highlighted in the next block here? We have two blocks. Each one is uh, 16 bytes. The second one is just a partial block. It's 15 bytes. Now you see a zero one is padded to the end of that block. So this is the pattern, the zero one. So how about others? For example, if I, I need a five bytes, 10 bytes, what would those patterns be? Actually, it will, it will be the number of the number of bytes we padded or number of pattern bytes. For example, here, we only need to pad one byte, then it's zero one. If we need to pad two bytes, you will get zero two, zero two because two bytes need to uh, be padded. If uh, it's uh, eight bytes, you need to pad. It would be 080808. Totally, you have uh, 808 as the pattern. Now, one interesting question. How about if uh, we have integer number of print text, will it be padded? As we discussed, to make the decryption simple, no matter it's uh, it can no matter the last block is partial or not, it's always uh, padded. Now, if the last block is uh, four, is sixteen bytes. So, what the padding block will look like? It will be a whole block, and each byte is uh, 16, 16, 16. But in hex number. It would be hex number one zero one zero one zero. Let's uh, verify that. So to verify that, we need to create a data file with exactly sixteen bytes. This is why we we need a uh, sixteen bytes here. You can uh, do it uh, by yourself with the hints, as I did here. You should be able to do it. You just stay in the decryption, keep the pad. You will see for those uh, data file whose last block is a four, if the padding is kept, the last uh, padding block will be a whole block. And each byte is a decimal number uh, 16, which means 16 bytes is uh, padded. And uh, if you show it as a, uh, in this we bin diff, because the show is as a hex number, it will be. One zero one zero one zero. There are totally sixteen one zero. And for this ten bytes, you will see uh, there will be a uh, ten bytes in order to pad to a whole block. We still need six uh, bytes, right? You will see that padding is zero six zero six zero six. Totally, there are six zero six in that padding. So you can uh, see by yourself. Now the last uh, task, task four, error propagation. Recover plain text from corrupted uh, subtext. I have uh, one uh, hint for you. How do we create a file with exactly five bytes, exactly 16, 10 bytes, and exactly uh, 16 bytes? You can. Use sub air to create, for example, file dot plan. Then inside, it's a text file. You just type a file uh, that is secret. Secret is uh, six, so just secret. Control S save it. This is sub air. The good thing for sub is that we are not add a, a, and a, a new line character. 
at the end, but some other editors, it may add an extra invisible new line character at, the, at its end. So here you can always use ls dash ls to check its length, fail dot plan. Here you see its length is fail, exactly uh, fail bytes. If you still have some uh, doubts, you can use hex dump to see it. Oops, uh, we use uh, need a dash c to see it clearly. Here you see just fail bytes, right? Exactly fail bytes. Some other editors, it may uh, add an extra uh, invisible new line symbol. So you need to verify with this hex number dump or with this ls test ls to make sure your text file, your text editor did not add an invisible new line to that. For example, if I use a echo followed by uh, this uh, secret to save it in file dot plan. Here you see I just type file character, right? But I actually it will add an invisible new line to this file. We can use ls dash ls to verify it. Did you see it? Its length is six. If you use a text editor to open it, you will not be able to see that uh, new line. Here you still see a secret. It can only be revealed with uh, hex editor, hex dump dash c, the pen file dot plan. Did you see that new line symbol is this one, zero a. You can check uh, that ask a code table, what zero a means. Is a new line. Okay, that's it. Now uh, we we tried this uh, last one. Does encryption decryption work? You wanted to know how to do it. I only give you a hint how to uh, flip only one bit of the third tens, the seven tens, the seven tens byte, and. Uh, with exactly 60 bytes, you know how to create a file with exactly 60 bytes. Just use sub L, you will be able to create it with exactly 60 bytes, right? Uh, I would like to uh, create uh, this folder. I uh, use sub L, create this file, file we create a 60, 60 dot plan. Now, how do I add six, exactly 60 characters? I just Pop some of from the here. Paste here. Now, totally, how many calculators do we have? You can see I have 260 calculators. Oops, there are so many calculators. So I remove the lines. Then I check how many I have here. You will see it says 998. Oh, you still have lots. Did you some of them? Check the lens. I have 77. So I still need to remove about uh, remove about uh, 17 characters. Now I still have uh, 70. I still need to remove 10 characters. Here I set two, I remove two characters. Okay, now I have uh, 60. You may suppose it's 60, but there will be some invisible new lines and they are not counted. So you need to uh, verify with the hex editor. Actually, we can save it and uh, verify it. We can use a uh, ls l this uh, 60 dot plan. Uh, here now you see uh, it's uh, 60, now it uh, looks good. And that uh, it uh, looks like that a new line is also counted. Here I have uh, 60, 
exactly uh, 60 characters. So this uh, looks good. But sometimes you may some have, uh, for example, empty space. If you have two empty spaces, it may not be able to, uh, I don't know whether it counted or not. But it looks like it should count, right? Here, this uh, one should count this sub L. It counts, it counts those empty space for us. So this is good. Some text editors, it may not. So you need to verify with the ls l or hex stamp. Now, how do we uh, modify exactly just the one, of one bit? As suggested, you may use a hex editor. For example, blast here. The blast is uh, installed in this seed version machine. So we type blast followed by this uh, 60 dot plan. How do I modify exactly uh, one bit? Here is a 16, here each byte is eight bits. We want to modify only one byte, or only one bit. And it asks you to only modify that 16 here, or that 7 tenths byte. So you need to find that 7 tenths byte. But here it didn't say start from zero or start from one. So let's uh, use the normal case in IT or computer science, we always start from zero. So did you see the ones here show at zero? So this is uh, zero spite. You, you can check the offset here. The first byte is zero, byte zero. The second byte is uh, zero one. Out of uh, three B, three B is a hex number of 60. So we need to find that uh, 17, no, 17 in hex number. We want to show as decimal number here. You see now it's uh, listed as decimal number. Zero one, uh, zeros, this is not decimal number. This is an uh, octal number. Start with uh, here, with zero, seven, three, octal number. You right click again. Now here you see uh, this one, it's, uh, it's a decimal number. But here you see only 59, which means that empty space it, uh, does not count in this uh, press editor. Here, uh, no, it's a counter, sorry. Because 59 is the last index, right? We index from zero. Uh, index from zero, so the last uh, one is index uh, is uh, 59. Now we want to find that uh, seven tenths, so we just find it. Here is 16, uh, here is a, uh, oops, I just come to this place, seven tenths. Here is a seven tenths. Now, how do you modify only one bit? Here, this uh, six, uh, eight, six, eight, when we use uh, this, uh, this one, this stuff, it uh, didn't show me. Uh, if I choose it to see whether I get some information. If I choose it, you will see it show me uh, Signed data set to unsigned data set to, so it looks like it's not a sick date. So let's don't use this uh, stuff because we don't know what they this, this said. So sick date, sick date in binary number. So what it looks like, we need to uh, modify only one bit. So you can use uh, IPython to convert it to into binary number first, or you can use your uh, calculator or uh, your smartphone, anything. You, you just need to, or online converter. Just to convert it into a binary number, I would like to show you use IPython. IPython is not installed. IPython 3, okay, IPython 3 is here. You use a function called bin, it uh, will be able to convert the number but please pay attention, this number is a hex number. So that's why you need a 0x, 68. It's a hex number, not a decimal number. So now you see uh, what the bytes that looks like. So you, to flip just one bit, for example, flip the last uh, bit, flip it to one, you will get uh, here 0b, 
one one zero one zero zero one. So just flip one bit here, the last uh, bit flipped from zero to one. Now I want to know what the hex number of this one. Actually, you just added the one to the last digit, so it should be nine, right? So it should be a six, 69. 69, how do we know it? You can use this uh, inter to convert this string, but uh, when we convert it, we need to remove that zero B and uh, tell it its uh, base is uh, two. Binary number is base is two. Decimal number is base is 10. Hex number is base is 16. Here, but I get a decimal number. So I still need to convert it to a hex number. 105. So you see it's exactly 69. So we just add one number to this uh, last bit. So we change it to 9 and save it. How do we change it? I deleted first, press the delete key, and uh, then press 69. It inserted 69 over there. And uh, you, you see the process, right? We just changed this. Uh, seven turns here seven turns by just one bit flip the one bit now you we need to save it as don't uh, don't uh, overload your previous one so we need to go to the file menu save it as save it as i saved it into lab 04 but this time i quit uh, 60 dot plan dot flip which means i flip just one bit instead of uh, seven turns Seven tenths uh, byte. So now I get it. This is how do you flip exactly only one bit. But now I don't need this. Uh, I press uh, so I close it. This time I would like to use within diff to show that. Uh, to compare those two 16 files. And you see that just one bit, they are different, I flipped it. That H is changed to I. Okay, now this is this part. Create a file with exactly 60 bytes, then you encrypt with these uh, four modes to get six encrypt, uh, to get four encrypted files. Then for each encrypted file, you use this uh, hex editor to flip one bit to the 17th byte. Pay attention, is this encrypted file, not that uh, plain text file I just showed you. So this, with this mode, this mode, you know, some mode we are add padding, this ECB, CBC, it will add uh, patterns for you. So you need to find that uh, seven tenths byte in that uh, self text, but it's okay because it's a seven tenths byte, not, not in those uh, padding areas. And uh, these are 60 bytes. 60 bytes you divide by uh, 16. What's the remainder where you get? The remainder would be a, uh, here we use a simple calculator. Let's use IPython. IPython 3, 3, to find its uh, remainder or the last uh, Partial block. The last uh, partial block has only uh, 12 bytes, which means it still needs uh, four bytes, four bytes as the padding. So that four bytes would be 0404004. Totally, you have 404. The, the padding block was the last partial block. So now uh, 
if that uh, encrypt file is corrupted uh, with only one bit, one bit is uh, corrupted here, the seven tenths bit, uh, byte, that is only one bit corrupted. So you decrypt the corrupted files, so which means for those four encrypted files, you change only one bit of the seven tenths byte, then decrypt those uh, modified, modified encrypted files to get decrypted file. But because it's corrupted, you may not, you may not be able to uh, recover all of them. So you use WebinDiff to compare the decrypted files with the corresponding print text file or the unencrypted files to find out how much you will be able to decrypt. So you can answer this question, the last question, how much information can you recover by decrypting the corrupted file, even though only one bit is uh, corrupted. So now you will think, uh, it's a seven tenths byte, so which, we, which block it's in? Which block is inside? This is seven tenths byte. It would be in block one, right? Block zero contains byte zero to uh, 15. And block one, should, uh, which means the second block, will contains this one. Now when you decrypt them, if those blocks are not chained together, then you should be able to recover all other blocks except this uh, block one. If those are chained together, which means from block two and all other blocks follow the block two, they will not be able to recover. Here you check the operating mode. For example, this ECB mode, the second block is corrupted. So it will not be able to recover, but because they are independent, so all other blocks will be able to recover. Now, for this mode, if this second block is uh, corrupted, if it's corrupted in your decryption, here you check here in your decryption, if this second block is uh, corrupted or block one is corrupted, because it's uh, subtext is also needed to decrypt the next block, so you, don't, you will not be able to recover this and uh, so on. For others, you will not be able to recover them. Is that true? You, you can do it uh, more. Actually, no. Here, in this one, if this subtext is corrupted, it only uh, has effect on this part, right? Which means only this part. But this subtext, it's supplied to the next block, so this next block will not be affected by the corruption of this one. So even in CBC mode, we still be able to recover, uh, be able to recover those blocks after this block, but this block we are, you will not be able to recover because this subtext is corrupted, so you will not be able to recover this corrupted block also, you will not be able to recover this block because it needs this subtext, but this subtext is corrupted. For the next one, this one, it only needs this subtext, so it should be able to recover. So in this mode, two blocks will not be will not be able to recover. Now, uh, with those modes here, let's check those modes. We know ECB mode is okay, CBC mode, we just uh, want to be discuss this one. The CBC mode, two blocks will not uh, be recovered. And for that CFB and OFB mode, let's check the CFB and OFB mode. For CFB mode, here CFB mode, it says in the decryption, right? In the decryption, the Self-tax of the second block, block one, is corrupted. So which means itself will not be able to recover. It also need for this one, right? It also needs for this block. So the block 
follow the, the second block, we are not be able to recover. But this subtext is not corrupted, so it uh, goes there. So that block after this uh, third block, all of them will be recovered. So in this mode, also two of them will not be able to recover. Now, we still have OFB mode. This OFB mode in the decryption here. In the decryption, in this OFB mode, the second up subtax, block of subtax is corrupted, so the second block will not be recovered. Here you see uh, this subtax is not used. It's not used for the decryption of this uh, block just after it, right? It uses the output from this uh, block cipher, not this subtax. So this block should be able to recover. So in this OFB mode, only this uh, block one is not able to be recovered. So we need to check, recheck this one. This one uh, we need is a safe text, not the output from this uh, block cipher, right? That's why we have two blocks. We are not be able to recover. So that's uh, your, uh, how do you analyze how much information can be recovered. And you need to verify with those open SSL encryption decryption. And we've been diff to check your result. And we also answered these questions.